Spellbreak takes a different approach to the popular battle royale genre by ditching the firearms and vehicles in favor of magic spells, sorcery, and runes. This is your boy OG Alpha of OG Games, and I present to you guys another OG Games review, this time Spellbreak. Let's go. Before we get into this game review, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell to stay up to date on OG Games content. And if you like video games as much as I do, then come hang out with me on Twitch at the link below. Spellbreaker was recently released across all major platforms back in September by Proletarian Incorporated, who as an entity was just founded back in 2012 by several industry vets who worked for different companies. Spellbreak is a cross-platform and cross-progression battle royale third-person shooter where your character wheels up to two magical gauntlets that come in six different flavors. Ice, fire, electricity, toxic, wind, and stone. When selecting your primary gauntlet before each match, you will notice that each element has their own class of abilities that you can level up four times throughout a match. You also have three talents, mind, body, and spirit, and it's pretty much the same as Call of Duty's perk system and you pick a different ability under each category, costing a, a certain amount of points between one and three. So pick carefully, mix and match, see what works. As with every other battle royale game, you start, to get, you start the match by barreling from the sky in some sort of fashion. But in this game's case, there's no glider or no parachute, just you flying down the sky with the cloud burst trailing you. As you play, you will also find upgradables for your gauntlets and talents, which you upgrade via reading scrolls and your runes. Upgrades are color coded for your runes and gauntlets, and they range from white for uncommon up to an amber color for legendary. You can also find upgrades for your amulet, belt, and boots to increase your magic meter, to allow you to use more spells and levitate longer, armor for more added defense, and run speed accordingly. You can also pick up runes for an additional ability such as flight, invisibility, teleportation, and so forth. There are nine total runes. Some I feel are much better than others. A few notably cool things I personally like about this game as well is that, well besides it being free as fuck of course, is that though there's only technically six different weapons, the developers have done a great job creating variety. Not only do you have your main attacks with the ZL and ZR buttons, I am speaking from Nintendo Switch because I have yet to try it on Xbox or PC. So you have your main attacks with the ZL and ZR buttons and you also have a more powerful sorcery attack which doesn't cost mana with the L and R buttons. They do take time to recharge, so be careful when using them when you're fighting it out. So this gives you a total of four general attacks. Even if you don't have a secondary gauntlet, you still have what is called a weak arcane attack. So it's kind of like a filler, but you don't have a filler sorcery attack. So keep that in mind. So, so make sure you get your second gauntlet ASAP. On top of that, you can mix up attacks between your two gauntlets if their elements can work with each other to create even bigger attacks or just create different effects. For example, uh, with the tornado that combines with the fire, you can make a fiery tornado. Combine it with the toxic, you can make a poison tornado. Combine it with the electricity, you can make kind of like a thunderstorm and so forth. Just keep playing, keep mixing and matching, see what you come up with. You can also use this effect against your enemy as well. For example, if your enemy throws the toxic sludge bomb, you can just throw the fire bomb, you can blow it up against them. The simplicity of this game makes it easy to pick up and play for anyone. There's a mandatory training mode you must complete before actually playing with anybody. But there's a side note. So I've heard rumors in other reviews that there's bots and plenty of them in your first few games. And it kind of got me thinking because I did win my very first round and I had about six kills or so. I mean, exiles, I'm sorry. That's spell break terminology for a kill. But as I play more, I noticed that it kind of feel like I didn't play with more players. But I don't know. I don't know. Maybe just because I, as I, I've been playing since September, so kind of shortly after the game's release. So maybe, maybe everybody just sucked. So who knows? Maybe we have crap internet. I don't know. I'm not going to delve into that too much, so I'm going to carry on. Uh, more things I do like about this game, the graphics. I really do like the graphics. They're of the cell shaded variety, similar to Zelda Breath of the Wild. Of course, that's a perfect example. The visuals and overall aesthetic of the game are pleasing. 
I dig the customization in this game, but my god, is it fucking costly. You can change your character's appearance, or skin, I should say, as well as the artifact that flows behind you. Your afterglow, which is your levitation aura, cloudburst, which is the energy that trails your descent at the beginning of every round, and of course, your emotes and triumph gestures, because it wouldn't be a proper battle royale without that. Now, some things I don't like. Um, there's and there's some networking issues, I should say, or I don't know, kind of like a generic term. But there's been times where I've been booted out of games, you know, just in the middle of fighting it out with a bunch of people. There's been times with the screen, not this didn't happen to me, but I've heard about the screen blacking out a lot on people. Um, just the other day on Twitch, uh, the screen whited out on me. <laughs> what in the hell was that? And I had to reset my switch, so so there's been some issues and hiccups. I mean, again, this is a uh, this is a fairly new game, so let's give these guys uh, let's give them let's give them a chance. Hopefully, they can work these bugs out ASAP. As I said a minute ago about the customization, I think this shit's far too expensive. Me personally, I'm not big on battle royales. I wouldn't be too surprised if others were the same way. But damn, this shit is a ripoff. But I'll be damned if I spend 1,200 coin which is the equivalent to 12 bucks on one skin. Mind y'all, you do earn coin per level up, but it's just 50 measly ass coins, so you do the math. Granted, you can also unlock a few customizables via leveling up, but that's besides the point. You can get ripped for gold, of course, in the gold store, where you can get 1,000 coins for 10 bucks, or as high as 13,500 coins for 100 bucks. Nah. I suggest they slash prices or maybe reward us with more gold. I think I think they should reward us with more gold. Maybe 500 gold per level up, maybe? Proletariat, are you guys listening? Let's try that. It's just an idea. All it takes is a few skins, and you're at the price of a full game. But other than that, I don't have too many drawbacks. Well, other than the fact that lobby times can be atrociously long due to the lack of players online, which is probably where they're proclaimed bots coming to play. If you check Twitch, you see that there's not too many people Aww. online watching Spellbreak. But me personally, I do hope it picks up steam. I mean, the game is only two months old, so who knows where it'll be six months to a year from now. Forgot to mention a couple things. Um, forgot to mention the game modes. <laughs> um, real quick, uh, you have Solo, Duo, which uh, as of... Uh, Mid late November is currently locked away for some odd reason. Squad, and then you have Clash. Solo is you by your lonesome versus 41 others to see who come out on top. Duo, two man teams. Squad is three man teams. And recently they added Clash, which is a team deathmatch with up to nine players on each team. And after each death, you respawn, and the first team to hit the, the, the score wins the match pretty much and uh one other complaint is that uh the fact that there's only 42 people on solo or just 42 people max i think the, i think they should increase the max so i think 60 is a good max it could get a little chaotic with a lot of people in one area duking it out so i can understand them having such a low cap compared to other battle royales they usually have uh, up to a hundred you know give or take so, uh, yeah, yeah, I wouldn't hurt to see a, a cap increase. You know, maybe 60, 65, somewhere around there. Maybe, maybe test the water, see how it goes, you know. But that's all I wanted to add it, folks. That wraps up Spellbreak and another OG Games review. This is your boy, Alpha. Let me know what you guys think about Spellbreak. Have you played it yet? Are you considering playing it? I personally like it. I think it's much different from the other Battle Royale games out there. And I hope this game sees some success and a rise in popularity. As I'm sure a rise in popularity can help alleviate the lobby time issue. Oh, and slash my fucking shop prices. My god. Or give us 500 coin per level. Something proletariat. Come on. Anywho. Alright gamers. This is OG Alpha of OG Games. I'll catch y'all down the road for my next game review. Be safe out there. Y'all take care now. Peace.